Hello and welcome to Home Time. Struggling to entertain your babies? Might I suggest one of these? <laughs> Is it me? Or does this dog want some cream? And this may be the greatest game of table tennis I've ever seen. Genius. Now that is how you deal with lockdown. Why is it that some people still don't understand that staying in saves lives and helps the NHS? Do you know one bloke travelled from London to Nottingham to buy a loaf of bread? Do you know why? He said a loaf was a pound cheaper there. And you're like, what about the money you had to spend on petrol? It gets worse, police in Essex had to close down a road because people wanted to feed the ducks. Is that essential? When was the last time you saw a skinny duck? I mean, Christ, Dappy from Endubs went fishing. Everyone else is staying in. He's like, I got a fine Nemo. <laughs> Did you see his excuse? He claimed fishing is an exercise. No, it's not. You burn more calories taking a shit. I've never seen someone down the gym like that. Fishing's an exercise. If sitting on your ass, grabbing your rod is good for you, then why does my brother look like this? So ducks, bread, fishing. Can the headlines get weirder? Yes, they can. I've made a Russell Howard sex robot to keep me company during lockdown. Ah! What the fucking fuck? Which is apparently one of his settings. So many questions. Why is he wearing dungarees? Why is he yellow? Why do his eyes look like that? How much of a pounding has that poor cyborg taken? That isn't a sex robot. That is an answer to the question, what would happen if Bart Simpson took meth? But I'll say this now. It may be deeply disturbing, but at least he's staying in. Quite literally. Because if him smashing in my robot back doors helps the NHS, then I salute you, sir. Because those heroes on the front line are struggling. Do you know they're running out of masks? They're running out of gloves. Some of them may have to use fucking aprons. It's a disgrace. If the government are calling this a war, then why are they dressing our soldiers up like dinner ladies? Who's even got an apron anyway? If you're a junior doctor, you haven't got an apron any more than I've got a fucking kimono. The way I see it, if our government is not gonna step up, then we need to do our bit and stay inside. Protect the NHS. You can still have a good time whilst you're indoors. You can pretend you're on a helicopter. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you can sunbathe on the beach. And if you have to feed the ducks, take a leaf out of this family's books. Yeah. Come in, come feed the ducks. Yeah. No, oh, look, there's two of them today. That's it. Feed the ducks, mate. What a show we have for you today. My first guest is the brilliant Guts Khan. You're used to seeing him like this. This is racial profiling. Go suck your mum's above you. We know our rights. Oh, don't play the race card, Mobeen. I am the race card. Why would you say it? What does that mean? What does that mean? Why would you say that? But today, he joins us like this. There he is. Look at him. You, can I just say this? And I, like, this is going to come across as homoerotic, but I don't care. When you stroke your beard, it gives me the chills. Listen, Russell, don't feel weird about it, bro. Okay, mm -hmm. this tingle is normal. A lot of dudes have said this to me before, that when I take my right, or sometimes my left hand, mm -hmm. and I gently stroke this beard. Yeah. 
Oh, he does a little something. He does a little something, doesn't it? It really does. It gives you an air of like, like a wise old king. Listen, I, I, I forget this interview. I need you in my life on a daily basis. Usually, when I'm doing this in the house, and my wife has asked me a question, she's like, stop stuttering, dickhead. Stop your stuttering. <laughs> and give me the answer that I want. Like, Thank you, Russell. It's, it's almost like you've got the hair equivalent of a pipe. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that you can, that when you say something and then go, it gives you an instant air of refinement. You feel like you could be in... You, you know, like, I'm not... Listen, don't take this the wrong way. You could never be a superhero, but you could be in charge of superheroes. You've got that. Okay, you're, 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 saying, you're saying I'm Pakistani Nick Fury. I'll settle for that. Yeah. Well, no one wants to see you in Lycra, but everybody <laughs> wants to see you in a throne dishing out orders. Oi, I'll, be, I'll take it. I mean, I'll take it. I agree with you. My kid is in Lycra, probably not going to look good on a 4,000 inch screen. I understand. But yeah. me on the throne, telling my, yo, dickhead, fly that way. I'm with you. How are you coping with, uh, with lockdown? Because you used to be a teacher, so presumably this is a breeze. You must be homeschooling the kids. Yeah. Um, I, I tried that for, for 22 minutes, 23 minutes on the first day of lockdown. Yeah. It turns out uh, I'm, I'm shit. Really? Yeah. Yeah, really shit. It's like, bro, once you've been out of teaching for a few years, it's like a boxer who's been out in the ring for a decade. It's awful, mate. Ring rust. Like, the kids are like, that's not even how you say that. That's, that's, that's not how you spell that. This motherfucker's four years old, okay? He's putting pressure on me. In the first day of lockdown, I'm like, it's going to be a long three months or whatever the hell it's supposed to be. So let me get this straight. So what are you doing? Okay, first, bro, first day, first day, I had everyone sat around the table. And uh -huh. uh, I, I, was, I was doing this, okay, I'm not, I'm not dad. I'm Mr. Khan now, yeah, and the kids are already like, oh God, what the kid, what the kid guy this is. <laughs> I, I began the lesson, and like it was 15, 20 minutes into um, just counting. We're just counting, is what we was doing. <laughs> and my son turned to me and goes, uh, "That's that's." I said, "Why is it?" He goes, "That's you're bored, isn't it?" I said, like, "I'm really fucking bored, son. Let's go in the garden. Let's go in the garden. That's what they're doing. Sweden and places like this, they don't even sit around tables. Let's go." So we went in the garden. My wife said, "This is a disgrace. You are a disgrace." I tried this. It didn't fucking work. It didn't work at all. But now she's taken over their curriculum. They're doing much better. So she's teaching. So presumably you're watching the news, are you? I have been keeping up with the news, Russ, yeah. Are you, um, please tell me you're not one of those people that believes it's 5G. Please tell me. Not you. Okay. Okay. Here's, here's the thing about it, okay? After, after some basic research, I had to do yeah. the research first, so it's just an irresponsible thing to do, yeah? Because a few of the lads are like, oh, bro, you know what the thing is, yeah? They've put the 5G maps up. And I said, do you mean maps? They're, no, 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 they've put the 5G maps up in the sky, yeah? And what's going to happen is, as soon as they put the 5G on, we're going to get them fumes. Fumes, by the way. Fumes are going to go inside your body, and we're going to get coronavirus, and I'm going to become a hermaphrodite. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not sure that's a symptom of coronavirus. No. And I don't think so, but apparently this is what 5G does. So be careful, Russell, if you're standing near one of them 5G maps. What got me was that a lot of people burnt down the mask because um, Amir Khan and Amanda Holden had mentioned <laughs> it in tweets. Now, th like, that's a man whose job is to be punched in the face and a yeah. woman whose job is to press a buzzer when she sees a dog she likes. Like, can you imagine... <laughs> Like, lovely people, but not great minds. If you rocked up to, like, a pub quiz with Amanda Holden and Amir Khan, you do you know what I mean? They're not letting you play. It's, um... so the, bro, the problem is, you know, bless him, daft as fuck, Amir Khan, yeah? <laughs> but very compelling, Russell. Very compelling yeah. human yeah. being. So yeah. if you explain to him just one simple fact, which is, all right, listen, Amir, listen, listen, are you, are you with me, focus? If this 5G is the cause of coronavirus, can you explain to me why there are several hundreds of thousands of cases in countries that don't have 5G? His immediate response would be, why don't you tell me? You can't, oh. argue, you can't argue with people like that. That's very good. My brother's like that. My brother is, so my brother's hair looks utterly ridiculous at the minute. You're like, mate, you need to cut your hair. It looks ridiculous. And he'll go, why do people climb mountains? You know, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? It's got nothing to do with anything. You look like you've had a trim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the missus has come through. I don't know where she's in the house, okay? 
is yeah. shit. Yeah, look, it's fucking it's shit. But, yeah. but yeah, but it was really good try, and the haircut was uh, really nice. Now come in, come in, come in, come in. She's really, I mean, yeah, she's not done a great job as well. Though. It's fucking shit, mate. And the thing is, she was like, oh no, they're watching YouTube videos, and I was like, fucking YouTube for what? Prison haircuts? What's next? <laughs> It's, can we? Can you sort of twist your head a bit more? Let's have a look it's at really, the back. It's really oh, back. Oh God! Yeah. You know, you know, ball cut. You know, ball cut in year six when you've been naughty at home and your mum's like, "Yeah, I'll show you a fucking haircut." It's time. Yeah, mate. I, I I know exactly like a ball cut. Were you? Did your mum used to to cut your hair? Bro, like literally. You know, with the the you know tie dye effect that you put on t shirts. We had this shit bowl that she used to pull out. She's around here somewhere as well. Got to be fucking careful. This is an indefinite lockdown. She used to pull this fucking tie dye bowl out, slap it on, and then, bro, I didn't think it would hurt, but she used to slap my head through the bowl and it really fucking hurt. Like stop moving. And it threw the bowl. It really fucking hurt. It's weird, isn't it? It was like I seem to remember like Sunday nights, you'd sort of be minding your own business and then suddenly from nowhere the bowl would appear and you're like, oh, Monday's going to be tough. Like you, just, you, just, you just feel it. Shum, 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 shum. Oh, man. Um, what, what are you looking forward to after all this? Have you, have you got something that's in your mind post-lockdown? I'll tell you what, bro. I, I quite uh, quickly escaped from Los Angeles in the States. So I had these grand plans of like, yeah, let's go. Let's go do this American thing, yeah? Let me, let me give them my vibes, my energy. Look where the fuck I am, bro. Look, you're the highlight of my entire fucking three months it feels like I've been here, okay? Bro, I'm yeah. eating hot noodles, not even the good ones. Chicken and mushroom. What kind of wank is that? Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, I, I respect you and I like you, but I won't hear you demean beef and onions rancid, but chicken and mushrooms, all right. Okay, brother. But it's easily number three on the list of Bombay bad boy and curry flavor, ain't it? Well, yeah, I'll give you that. That's true. That's true. So I'm done. What's the weirdest thing you've eaten? What's this in lockdown? Yeah. Fucking hell, bro. What's them shit little thin breads that don't even, they're not even breads. They're right, right. Rivita. Right. Rivita. Yeah. You listen, bro, bro, this is a dirty one. I don't know what, Rivita and Petty for Louis was dirty. What the? Hang on. What, like the, the yogurt? Yeah, bro, bro, I was looking at the fucking, the fridge was bare. I was in LA telling everyone, stock up, motherfuckers, it's going to be bad. Everyone's like, he's a dickhead, just throws the beard all the time. And then I got home, and that night, bro, I was, I was faced with this fucking horrible situation. There was four petty flus, and I was like, what can I, what can I sustain myself with? Dirty ride Vita. Oh, my God, you maniac. See, so you were just, so you had like a ride Vita and yogurt sandwich. Yeah. Jesus, we need to get you up. Oh, no. If we could sort of like deliver the perfect meal for you now, what would it be? Bro, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a simple man. Just a chicken filet burger, okay? Sandwich between a Warburton's bun and a grape soda. Just to, just, oh, I'll make it cold myself. I've got ice, even a warm one. A filet burger, a fucking grape soda. Us. We're laughing. I'll but, say this now. When all this is over, you and me, are going to hit up a place I like to call KFC. And then we're going to go to a co-op and I'm going to get some Warburton's bread. I'm going to put the chicken filet in the middle, chop it down the middle. We'll probably have to go to another co-op to get the grape juice, whatever that is. <laughs> um, and I will, I will feed that to you as you stroke your beard. Oh, mate, listen, there is a, an erection bullying in my closet. <laughs> Always a pleasure, my friend. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the magnificent Gazkar. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Amazing. Now, a recent study has found out that 44% of young people are feeling especially lonely during the pandemic. Well, after the break, we'll be speaking to a young lady who may be able to help. Welcome back to the show. Now, we're all getting used to new technology, but here's a tip. If you're using Zoom, always remember to press leave meeting. Hey guys. Oh, <laughs> and if you're an Italian priest doing a mass, take your filters off. Buonasera. 
ci ritroviamo insieme per pregare, io in chiesa e voi a casa. Now, a lot of people are struggling with their mental health during coronavirus. My next guest is a volunteer who's helping those people with a special text service. Her name is Caitlin Grant, and I caught up with her earlier this week. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well, and yourself? I'm very well indeed, thank you. Um, now, you're volunteering for a charity called Crisis Text Line. What do they do exactly? So Crisis Text Line is an online service for people who are struggling with their mental health. This can be any range of mental health kind of issues they're facing. Whether you struggled with anxiety or depression for years, or you've just had a low day, we're here to support you online. You can reach us out by texting spun out to a number that's online, and we will be there volunteering to help you get the support you need. There's a similar one set up in the UK called Shout UK. Mm -hmm. And if there are people from the UK watching, um, which I'm sure there are, that's the kind of service that's, that's for them and we'll give them that support that they need during this difficult time. And so how does that work then? So if I was assigned to you, would we have like, like a constant communication or is, how does it work exactly? So they'll come on and send that number in they'll be assigned a texter and then i'll be there ready for them to um, start a conversation then this conversation can last any time from five minutes to an hour usually and it depends on what kind of support they're after whether they just want to say how awful their day was or they want some some signposts to get more information or they just want someone to be there for them at that moment that is the main thing, isn't it? It's like once you're given tools and techniques to sort of see when you're spiraling, it makes it so much easier because you're able to go, ah, well, what's happening, happening there is I'm doing this, I'm thinking this, this hasn't happened. And just it's almost like being a, somebody showing you how to use the brakes on your brain a bit. Exactly. Just having that small support can make a difference. And that's what Crisis Text Line wants to do. Mm. We want to help people go from a hot moment to a cool calm so they can learn and be guided through and help themselves. And it's, I often think as well, it's a lot easier talking to somebody who doesn't know you because there's no baggage. There's, you know, you're just a completely different, you know, person and that you can just explain your situation and there's no kind of prejudice or fear that somebody would go, you know, there's things we can't talk to our friends and family about, unfortunately. It would be better if we could. But sometimes you just need somebody completely anonymous where you can just download. And that's where you come in. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the whole thing. It's anonymous. You don't have to call in. You don't have to be anxious over the phone. You just mm -hmm. send a message. And at any moment, you can text stop to finish the conversation. How has the coronavirus impacted on the service? Because of the coronavirus, we've seen a lot more people come onto the platform. This is because globally, we're feeling a lot more anxious. We don't know the answers to the questions. When will it be over? When will we get to see our friends again? When will we go back to school? Will, be, will we be able to financially support our families? No one knows the answer to this because we haven't faced a pandemic like this before. As if this wasn't enough, you're also a key worker because you're working in a grocery shop. Is that right? You've literally just uh, legged it from, from your shop, haven't you? Yeah. So today I finished, I finished work at four and I legged it home. There's a little shop down the, uh, the end of uh, my road and there's like three boys are in there. They could be anywhere between 18 and 22, I don't know. Um, and they all work at the co-op. And they, I see them every day and they're kind of waiting outside. And they're these, I love them, they're heroes. And I see them every day because I take my dog for a walk. And I hope that when this is done, the people like you and, um, you know, all people that are working in shops, nurses, um, people, bin men, anybody, that they receive the full VIP treatment of the world. Wouldn't that be great? Do you know what I mean? That, that, I love the idea that maybe there's a packed nightclub and maybe I'm in like a VIP bit and somebody goes, Oi, come on, get the fuck out. There's a couple of lads here from co-op and I have to kind of move along. I really hope that happens. <laughs> I thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate you coming on. That was terrific. Um, we'll put all the details. It was the, uh, it's crisis text line and the, yeah. one in, what the one in the UK is? Shout UK. 
Shout UK. Brilliant. Thank you very much for coming on the show and um, look after yourself. Thank you. What a wonderful young lady. Now it's time for our final guests. It's Harry and Chris and they have a song for us about lockdown. Hello everybody. Hey, we're tuning in from London. And Margate. Russell asked us to write a little something about the strange place this world is becoming. Where we're only allowed one hour of exercise a day, which is an hour more than I'd have done anyway. But if you time it for a Thursday just before eight, people come to their doorstep and cheer you on your way, because home is where the heart is. Home has become where my office slash gym slash bar well, is. Well, home is where the studio and crash have combined. The new material I'm working on will blow your mind. Oh. When only locksmiths are allowed to do their jobs That's the wrong kind of key workers That's huh. chimpanzee vets That's monkey workers Specialist eggy chefs That's niche quiche workers What about car manufacturers sweepstakes on amateur tobacco shaped quirky biscuits That's Suzuki's bookie for rookie wookie kookie cookie workers Huh One, One day, day we'll, we'll look, look back, back and say Do you remember coronavirus? It was pretty scary at the time I mean we've never, never seen anything, anything like it for a while out there, it was touch and go. Will you make it through? You don't really know. And that's just living with a one-year-old when you can't palm them off on granny. There'll be a time when we don't have to keep our distance when we meet. We can just chat. There'll be a time when we see friends and won't have to cross the street. Unless we run out of chat. There'll be a time when our own toenails aren't something we have <sighs> to eat. That's not a thing. You went like, was like a short to just pasta and you thread. went straight and ate your own toenails. There's a time when we're kinder to those that we love When goodbyes come with slightly more emotional hugs When I'll buy six toilet rolls and not be accused of stockpiling That's just a big night in There's hope on the horizon And there's light on the shore I look forward to the time when we can see each other more When you open your eyes and I'm there in front of you saying Ah, uh, I think you're on mute. Uh, you're on mute. Yeah, hit the microphone. No, that's the background. Change, uh, hit the mic. I don't even know how you do that. Um, to the chorus. One day we'll look back and say, do you remember coronavirus? When the world's response was to come together to cope with the global crisis. It's in the dark of the tunnel, the only place that goes where the light is. And it kept us apart at the time, but it left us more united. See you on the other side. Thanks very much for watching the show. Please get up for all my guests. Guz Khan, Caitlin Grant, Harry and Chris. You, as ever, can contact me with the hashtag HomeTime and I will get back to you. Any stories you've seen, anyone you want me to talk to, that kind of caper. Until next week, peace.